Have you ever experienced stress after hearing the bad news that one of your grandparents had slept and went to the hospital? I have that kind of experience at least twice in my life and have unfortunately witnessed how difficult it was for the elderly to recover from a hip fracture. A recent statistic from Canadian Institute for Health Information reported that approximately 51% of injury-related hospitalization cases were for seniors in Canada. Approximately 81% of these cases were due to falls. Walking is seen as an automatic task. It consists of stepping forward with alternative foot following a path. Do you know that it is also a marker of physical health status in old age? In fact, several gait parameters have been associated with false risks in old adults. For example, the stride time variability characterizes the regularity of footsteps. It indicates the variances in the walking pattern, meaning that when your foot lifts, strikes the ground, lifts again, and then strikes again. Researchers have focused on how the instruction to synchronize have affected gait in young adults. Some participants were instructed to synchronize their walking to the beats, whereas others were not. Those that were in the instruction group aligned their footsteps more accurately to the beats compared to the uninstructed group. Rhythmic auditory cueing includes the use of a patterned beat to serve as an external pace for movement. At the basis, the beat is the pulse of a music. For example, a metronome is an isochronous rhythm, meaning a regular beat. Iso refers to same in Latin, and chronos refers to time. In one study, beat perception was assessed using the beat alignment task. In this task, you would be asked to tell whether the superimposed metronome is on or off beat with the excerpt of music. For instance, take a listen to this. These beats will be superimposed to the music, like the one playing in the background. Then you will be asked whether they are aligned or not while sitting. Regular beats did not benefit walking parameters in young adults when they were slower than the preferred cadence. But if the metronome cues were at a faster tempo than the spontaneous speed, young adults who were weak in beat perception showed overall worse walking performance. They had slower, shorter, and wider steps compared to good beat perceivers. They also synchronized more accurately. Dual tasking refers to the ability to walk while performing a secondary task. The performance on dual task walking predicted the incidence of falls after controlling for gender and depressive symptoms of older adults. There are many kinds of dual tasks in research studies. For example, a researcher might ask the participants to perform a mental task while walking. So, are you able to subtract 7 from a given number while walking until I say stop? Another task might be, are you able to play at a regular beat on this drum while walking to the rhythm? You can be interested in measuring the walking speed as the outcome. The more challenging is the math added to walking, the more cognitive resources are involved. So this results in greater detriment to walking performance compared to less demanding cognitive tasks because the added tasks pull the attention away from whatever movement you are mainly focused on. A cost, or in other words, a detrimental effect would result in one of the tasks. 
In conclusion, there are both benefits of rhythmic auditory cueing and costs of dual tasking in attentional control. Hopefully, researchers could find a way to help healthy older adults in improving gait, because steadier footsteps and more balanced movement potentially help to reduce the number of hospitalizations of early adults. This would make relatives less worried. Especially, individuals with Parkinson's disease have some difficulties in executing fluid movements. More therapies involving auditory stimulation, including music, could be a future hope.